Hi everyone, I'm Alex, a developer relations engineer. And I'm Matvey, a software engineer working on Jetpack Compose. So today, we are going to take a look at how Compose can help you build uh, adaptive UI on all your apps, no matter the orientation, device you're running on, or the window real estate available. We'll learn what considerations to keep in mind uh, when building apps at each layer. Speaking of layers, today we are going to zoom in bit by bit. We'll start from the application level, which is the outermost level for your UI. Then we'll go to the screen level, which is like still you get the majority of the window, but you arrange items and components uh, based on the window size available. And then we are going to take a look at the components and how the choice of components can help you have an adaptive UI by default. Um, let's start from the application level. In this level, you basically have your window to render your whole UI into. Um, the thing about this window is that this window has obviously a size, height, and width. And this width and height, they can change dynamically. And it will change as your app is running. And you have to keep these considerations in mind. Let's start first to see like what we should do and what we should not do uh, with this knowledge that the window size can change. Let's start from breaking the rigid assumptions of having is phone or is tablet uh, booleans in your application. Going to the extreme, you can have completely different UIs, files, code structures, navigation patterns that can result in bug fix uh, in the bugs. And bug fix is hard. You have to maintain the whole separate like structures and files. And most importantly, this doesn't represent the patterns like the, how the users use our UI these days, uh, our applications these days on the all devices available. For example. Those are the patterns we should avoid. And this is, uh, for example, uh, the tablet in which user has decided to put our application, decided to put our application uh, base, uh, um, side by side with another one. This results that uh, in our app having a window size which is way closer to the phone than to the whole tablet available. So it's way more practical to work with the window size and not with the device size or something like this. Thankfully in Compose, we can, uh, use it with ease. We can just treat our window size as an input to our composable. Because of the nature of Compose, when the window size changes, the, com the composable is decomposed, and you can make some UI-based UI decisions based on this uh, window size. As you might have heard, uh, we took it a bit further and made it a library, which we call material3-window-size-class. Uh, this library provides you with useful methods like calculate window size class. This method takes the numerical size of your window using the Jetpack Window Manager APIs and convert it to what we call a window size classes, which is a set of our predefined uh, width and height breakpoints, uh, which represent the majority of devices or window sizes in a particular category. For example, uh, compact window size width of the window can represent the majority of the phones, but also if you place the application side by side with another tablet, you also get the, window, uh, the compact window width size class. So taking this library, we can use it in Compose just like this. We take it as, a, as an input to our Composable, and then we make UI-based decisions. Because we're talking about the application level, the, up, the UI we should be concerned about is mostly navigation. So what we recommend is that we recommend to use bottom navigation for the compact window size classes, and then we recommend to use um, navigation rail for the rest, meaning the medium and expanded window width size classes. Uh, we have this talk called uh, Navigation Compose on Every Side Screen by Jeremy that goes more into the details of how to handle uh, all the bits and pieces of navigation in your application, given the large screens. All right, now let's zoom in a step to take a look at the level of a screen. Your app probably has many screens, each with a recognizable set of UI to provide some functionality to the user. You might have a home screen, a search screen, a settings screen. These are each going to look differently from each other. So what's a generic framework that we can use to construct a screen that is going to be shown across these various devices and window sizes? Well, when you're creating a screen, you're building a logic, or sorry, you're building a screen that's rendering UI as a counterpart for the logic for that screen. So from a state holder, you'll get the state, a uh, list of information, loading information, error states, and you'll also pass back events to the state holder representing user actions. With both of these two things, you can create a bunch of basic UI uh, that you can display. These will be your basic composable functions, things like text, buttons, and checkboxes. Components can also be combined into other components. You might have a reusable list item, a reusable card item, and you might be displaying multiple of the same type of component to display a list. All right, so we have the state we want to display. We know what the user can do on the screen, 
And we also have all the individual pieces of UI I want it, we want to show. But we're still missing one thing, and that's the screen itself. What you need to do is lay out all these components together. And you should use the window size class as an additional input into this decision. So at a compact width, we can render all of our components vertically in a column one by one. But at an expanded width, we could use those same components, but use an alternate arrangement that makes better use of the screen space available. So here we have now a single screen that's rendering adaptive UI. Same data, same actions, but alternate layouts. This is the primary role of this screen level composable, managing the arrangement of components with the same data and actions where that arrangement is partially based on the window size. All right, with this in mind, let's take a look at a simple onboarding example. Here we have an image of my cat, some contextual information, and button to continue on to the rest of the screen. The logic for the screen is super straightforward. On all devices and window sizes, you should be able to see the info and then continue on to the next screen. So let's see what happens when we run a larger screen. Oh no, the button is completely cut off here, and it's impossible to continue on to the rest of the app. So we can clearly do a better job here, both to make it be functional and also use the window size to choose a better overall layout. So let's start with the current code, with the column of the image, the text, and the button. The very first thing we can do to fix that show-stopping bug where we couldn't even continue on to the rest of the app is to make the column scrollable. So this will work, but it will not be quite as good as we can do. We can do better. So the main issue here is that our image is filling up the entire width of the window. Uh, this sort of worked if you're in portrait, where the height is much taller than you are wide. Um, but as the aspect ratio changes closer and closer to the landscape, that starts to break down. Instead, what we can do is apply a weight to the image inside the column. This allows the image to resize and ensures that the button is always going to be visible without having to scroll. All right, one more thing we can do, though, is when we're at an expanded window width, we now have enough space that we can rearrange the components to make better use of the screen space available. So at an expanded width, we can instead display the image side by side in a row instead of in a column. So putting all these things together, we now have a UI that is both functional and looks good across window sizes. And as the window size changes, the screen will adapt its layout to ensure all content is displayed. OK, uh, now let's take a look at the little bit more complicated examples using kind of the same framework. Uh, these examples involve um, companies that move in relation to each other and the window itself. And the arrangement changes as the window size changes. We identified these three patterns, which we call feed, uh, supporting panel and list detail, which are the most common throughout the whole um, variety of apps you can um, you can build. We call them canonical layouts, as you might have heard before. Uh, we treat them as canonical layouts because they're our opinionated way on how you can arrange components on a screen and how you can change this arrangement based uh, on the window size that is changing as well. Let's go through them one by one to learn more. So feed uh, is the... Um, Amazing canonical layout that uh, displays the set of items with roughly equal importance. You can see on the mock here, we have kind of like a staggered grid, which is also the API available in Compose 1.3 as experimental. Uh, the real-life example of this might look like uh, the following. Uh, the video is running. The video is running. So on the video, uh, you could see how... Thank you. Uh, how... how um, the now in Android app is being resized and we switch from lazy column, uh, single column composable to a staggered grid. And as more as I resize, uh, resize the window, the more uh, cards join the horizontal uh, row while still being scrollable. This is basically the staggered grid as well we're using from Compose. Uh, also here, you should be able to see the power of the freeform emulator, which uh, allows you to test, uh, to test your UI uh, while the window is dynamically changing, which is very, very useful. So just to recap quickly, the feed is very useful when you have a set of items. Uh, it can be used for videos, cards, images, and so on. We have some APIs available. Lazy vertical grid is a stable API available in Compose to use this, or lazy vertical staggered grid if you are feeling a little bit more experimental, which is an experimental API available in 1.3. In this example, uh, with now in Android, I use adaptive grid strategy, which allows you to basically get the, um, the resizing um, more cards joining your uh, width of your window as you resize for free by using uh, adaptive arrangement, both on just grid and a staggered grid as well. OK, on to the next one, which is a supporting panel. Supporting panel uh, gives you um, gives the majority of the content to the main 
uh, portion, which is kind of content in focus, and then the rest, which is a supporting panel, which is a su supporting uh, part of the of the window. Remember this uh, video cards example we just built a few minutes ago. Well, this is basically a uh, supporting panel which uh, we can build using Compose if you have the right tools. Let's find out these tools. Um, first of all, we calculate the window size classes as before. The important thing to note here is that even though we introduced window size classes at the application level, they are still useful at the screen level as well. Why? Because at the screen level, you still get the majority of the window. And so it makes sense to make some um, distinctions based on this data. So we calculate our window size class, and we also calculate a display, a display features, which is the object containing um, uh, information about faults and hinges to better support foldables. This calculate display features is our API available in a company's library. A company's library is our laboratory-like um, library available on GitHub, contains some useful bits and pieces that are not yet in Compose. Go check it out. Uh, try these building blocks we'll see uh, right now and later on, on in the stock. Let us know what you think, file issues, and go check the second link, which is FAQ, that explains why a company exists and why you might use them. So we're taking this display, uh, the window size class and display features from our companies, and we build in our supporting panel. Uh, first of all, you can see the two pane, which is uh, the building block also in our companies, uh, companies.adaptive, which is like the whole set of um, adaptive building blocks. So you take this uh, building block, it allows you to arrange two pieces of content, either vertically or horizontally, and it also supports foldables, uh, as, we, as, we can see, uh, as we can see later. So this is amazing building block for supporting panel. We take this two pane, we pass our first slot as video, the main content, and then we uh, leave the second content for the second slot for the list. Now the most juicy bit. Uh, we pass the strategy, and we pass the strategy based on the window size class available. So for example, we would, might, dis uh, might decide that it makes sense for us on a compact um, window width to show them one by one vertically and then arrange them horizontally on the medium set class. Uh, we can also realize that, for example, for the expanded uh, window width, we have more real estate available, and we can give a little bit more to the video. So that's, that's where you can see like 0, 7 for the expanded one. Uh, last but not least, display features, remember? I told you about this. Um, so on this amazing, amazing photo, you can see the tabletop uh, mode on a foldable. It's basically a foldable that is folded 90 degrees. Uh, and uh, Passing display features will make sure that two pane respects this well. So if your user decides to put like 90 degrees, uh, your foldable 90 degrees, the two pane will arrange them 50-50, so uh, both of the panes are accessible uh, properly. So to a little bit recap, supporting panel is a very versatile canonical layout, to be honest. Uh, as long as you have any main content and any part of supporting content, uh, you can use this um, canonical layout to support better large screens. Uh, two pane is here to help. Uh, it can support vertically, horizontal, split. You can tweak the values as your use case fits. And you can specify like what folds to support, what hinges to support, and then what orientation. So pretty, pretty flexible. Right. The last one is list detail. Uh, the list detail is the canonical layout which allows you to set uh, to show either list, the selected item from this list, which is a detail, or both. Because we are talking here uh, a hierarchical UI where you can have a list and detail, and basically detail uh, depends on the item selected in the list, the navigation uh, part might present some challenges for, uh, for this canonical layout. Uh, please go check the talk, Navigation Compose on large screens. It's uh, thoroughly covered there how to handle the back stack and all this navigation story there. On the UI part, we can use two pane again, because basically you can show the two panes on a list and detail. So uh, this is amazing building block for our list, de list detail as well. And a bit of recommendation from our sites. We recommend to use only list or only detail on a uh, compact and medium with size classes, and show both on the expanded one, as you have more real estate. Uh, the, the sample for the supporting panel, and for the list detail, and for the feed, are available on this link. This is the um, repo of our samples we hosted on GitHub. Go check it out. Try it in your application. Let us know what you think. And then hopefully, those samples should allow you to get to the happy large screen place better and faster. All right. So we've looked at an app, uh, the app level. We've looked at the screen level. Let's zoom in one more time now to talk about individual components. Uh, individual components should also be flexible and work across a different range of sizes and using the correct building blocks to do so. 
Uh, components that are flexible will help with optimizing for larger screens, but they will also help to alternate amounts of space due to different languages, different font size, different data, or any combination of the above. These more flexible components are also more reusable, because it means you can plug them into different areas more easily without running into issues. So let's first take a look at an inflexible component. So as you can see here with these cards, if there's not enough space, or if the font size has been increased, the chips at the bottom might be cut off, which isn't great. So let's take a look at how we can fix that. We'll start with our overall code for the card, which has a column of the header, the title, and the body, and then the chips at the bottom. And we know those chips aren't very scaling very well. So let's take a cl closer look at those. Right now, we're displaying the chips in a basic row. So this seemed to work if we only had one or two chips and if we had enough space. But as you can see, if we have more chips or not enough space, this starts to break down. We can fix this by using a more appropriate component for the job. FlowRow is another component from Accompanist that allows us to do so. FlowRow will break the chips onto an additional line if possible, or if needed, uh, to display all the chips without being clipped. So as you can see here, now all five chips are displayed um, across two rows. So going back to the cards, we can now see that the chips are no longer cut off, even on the different screen sizes and font sizes. Setting up a set of previews like this is super helpful um, to verify your behavior as you're making changes uh, and to test across different amounts of these configurations. Um, and also, if you want to apply these configurations to multiple composables, uh, be sure to create a multi-preview annotation as well. One other thing to keep in mind at the component level is that devices with larger screens also mean different input devices being used to interact with your app. So if you're using a mouse, things like hover states and mouse clicks are important. Uh, composables, uh, components from Composables handle these interactions automatically. Um, so things like uh, the simple interactions automatically. So things like if you're using modifier.clickable or indication, you should get some of these basic support um, out of the box. But there's a lot more that you can do here to make full use of the flexibility that these different, different input devices provide. So be sure to check out the other ADS talks on keyboard, mouse, and stylus. All right, so we're going to zoom back out now. Think about how you can make each level of your app more responsive. If individual components can be intelligently displayed across a large number of configurations while making less assumptions, they're going to be more reusable and robust to different combinations of size, locale, and other factors. These reusable components are also easier to organize in different ways, using the screen space available to structure a screen that still provides some functionality to a user. And at the app level, you can see the benefits of separating state from UI. You have a single app and navigation structure that's representing the same data and features to a user, but it's optimized to be even more useful on their device. Thank you very much, and as always, happy composing.